What is going on guys? So in this video, we are going to be talking about Integromat. Integromat claims that they're the glue of the internet and it's a very, very interesting platform that deserves to be explored further. And so this video is going to be divided into several parts. The first part, I'm going to talk about what Integromat is, its functionality, how it can help you, why you should use it. Later on, we're going to discuss some alternatives to Integromat, some other services that deserve your attention that you may want to look into, including a service that you probably are more familiar with than this specific service. And then later on, I'm going to show you how I'm using Integromat myself, and we're also going to try to send a couple of sample requests and process the data so that I can show you how the data is being utilized how we can use that data and how we can get that data to connect with a bunch of other services. And so starting with Integromat is the glue of the internet. Integromat is the most advanced online automation platform. We've redefined work automation so everyone can, back, can get back to what matters the most. And so if you go to the homepage, you can learn a little bit more about the service. What is Integromat? When new emails, e email arrives, you have a Google Sheet, you can uh, process attachments one by one, you, you have a router, you can post images to, to Facebook, you can archive it, you can Dropbox. So not only does Integromat connect with a bunch of other applications, it off also offers a form of logic. So meaning you can process these images with different parts. You have a router, you also have something called an iterator array system where you can essentially take many different results and process them together. Or you can take one combined result and separate them into individual parts and have those parts processed by other systems. So, so in my view, Integromat is part of a family of services that allows you to basically program the internet. And so you know, you have a lot of these apps, for instance, email marketing, it does a lot of these uh, interesting automations, a lot of other apps, and a lot of those functionality you can replace with this service, and it's also going to be a lot more flexible. Not to mention it can replace the actual workflows that exist in maybe code that you've written before. So there's a lot of, lot of things that it can do, and it's a very... Uh, it's a very feature-rich product, not to mention the service is extremely affordable. I'm actually on the free plan right now, and if I need to upgrade to the next tier, it's going to be very, very affordable. And so before we, I show you what I'm using Integromat for, and so before we talk about how I'm using Integromat and actually putting into use in your use cases as well, let's talk about some of the alternatives, and that's going to give you a better idea of how it exactly it fits in into perhaps your own workflow at what you're doing right now or what you're planning to do later on. And so here I have an article, five top free Zapier alternatives. Which one will you choose? So Zapier is probably the most well-known automation service that exists right now. This is probably the service you're most familiar with if you are at all familiar with this space. And so Zapier was something that uh, I knew way back, I think it has existed for many years now, and I'm not sure when Zapier launched, but I know Integromat for a fact launched uh, later than that. And so here you go, you have Zapier is a popular and effective tool, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have a Zapier quick, uh, quick overview. And the first alternative is Integromat which is uh, no coincidence, since this is a great, great tool. The only real negative that I see with Integromat is that Integromat supports less workflows and less connections than Zapier. And that's because Zapier is more well-known. It has been around longer, and so that's not a surprise. Then we have Automate, which is actually a product I'm not familiar with. Uh, we also have Microsoft Flow, and this is actually a product that, ha I, that I have heard good things about. So I do plan on testing it out in the future. I may make a video about it as well with my thoughts and comparisons. And then we have Workato, which is another product that I'm not too familiar with as well. And IFTTT stands for if this, then that, which is kind of what these services do. If something happens, execute this workflow. If something happens here, if a time occurs here, if a certain time interval passes, execute this. And this is something we're going to get to in a second. 
And so now that we looked at a bunch of alternatives for Integromat, let's go into my own setup here and I'm gonna show you how I use Integromat myself. And before I do that, let me show you a little bit about around the UI and explain to you all the functionality and how you can use the service as well. So first we have the dashboard and you're basically looking and you're looking at my dashboard right now. We have the subscription. I'm under the free plan right now. And if I click on the free plan, you can see that the basic plan, which allows 10,000 operations, is only $9 a month. And I believe this is cheaper than Zapier and cheaper than a lot of other services as well, which is fairly affordable for so many operations that you get per month. Right now I have 1,000 operations per month. And for the services I'm doing, for the light work I'm doing, it's sufficient right now. And so we're going to go into back to dashboard. We have our chart here. We have users, uh, some account information. Then we're going to go into scenarios. And scenarios are, in fact, these automations. Okay, They call them scenarios, but really it is an automation. And so we're going to get to that in a second. Later, we have the templates. And templates are essentially our base that you can create automations from. They're essentially automations that are very, very common. And so as a result, people just start with these templates and create their customized automations from this base. And so we have the most popular one here, which is uh, add new incoming emails to Google Sheets, spreadsheets as a new row. We have send Telegram messages for new RSS feeds, uh, save Telegram messages to a Google Sheets spreadsheet, Google Sheets, HTTP to JSON, Twitter to the score. So a lot of interesting automations and you can pretty much create any kind of automation that you want, which is something we're going to discuss in just a second. We also have connections. These are the connections that I've set up so far. We have my Google connection, mail buster connection, and another Google connection here. We also have web hooks. So I have a mail hook, which uh, triggers when an email arrives to this address. And then we have a gateway web hook, which triggers when a request arrives here. We also have keys. I don't have any keys set up. Then we also have the devices. I have my phone set up here, followed by data stores for persistent data. And you can add a data source here. You can set it up. I'm not using that functionality right now. We also have data structures, and I'm also not using that functionality right now. Then we have my apps, which are the apps you can connect with other apps to create a workflow, and a bunch of other features as well. And so let's go into scenarios and now I'm going to show you how we can set up a sample scenario. So I have a couple of scenarios here. We're going to click on create a new scenario and we're going to create a brand new scenario. And so let's say the scenario that we want, and you can create obviously any kind of scenario. Let's say we want to receive a request from a third party service and that is called a webhook. We want a webhook and we wanted to send an email to me, for instance. Obviously we can do anything that we want. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to start with something very, very simple. And so we click on a webhook here. We're going to click on webhook. And we want a webhook. We do not want a mail hook. We, don't want, we do not want a webhook response. We want a trigger because the trigger is what starts the whole automation. There are two kinds of triggers. One is a time-based trigger and another one is a webhook or a mail hook trigger. Okay, and there's also several other triggers depending on the application, but that is all you have to know when you're starting out. You can have a trigger that's based on a time that occurs daily or every 15 minutes or every X days or every month, etc., etc. Or you can have a webhook that's triggered from an application. So in this case, it's going to be a webhook or a mailhook. We're going to click on this webhook here, and then we're going to configure it. So we're going to configure my own webhook that I have set up here. Actually, this webhook is already in use, so we're going to create a brand new webhook here. We're going to create a, a brand new webhook here, and we are going to se be sending sample requests to it later on in the video. So I'm just going to create sample uh, test webhook here, and there's no IP restrictions because it's just for testing. And that is now we've set it up, and now this tool gives us a URL that we can send a request to, okay? So right now it's waiting for data. And so we can copy it to um, the clipboard and we can send the request. And so before I send any sample request to this webhook, I'm gonna create another module here. And this is gonna be a module that's gonna send me an email. So we're gonna click on email here. We're gonna click on this email module and we're gonna do send me an email, okay? 
just for testing. And the subject is going to be like, hey there. And the content is going to be the result of our webhook. This is the result of the data of the webhook. Now, because we haven't configured the webhook yet, we do not know what kind of data is going to be sending. And so that is why we need to go back here. We need to choose our test webhook and we need to click on redetermine data structure. Once we click on that, it starts listening to requests. So what we want to do is we want to copy the address to clipboard. We want to go to this really great tool called Postman. It's postman.co and you want to create a new request. And so what you want to do is when you open it here, you can create a new collection here. And by the way, this is an amazing and amazing tool for APIs, any kind of APIs, whether it's testing APIs, creating your own APIs. This is a great tool. I'm using the free plan right now, which is makes it very, very convenient and easy to send requests, to receive requests, to any kind of API work. This tool is going to help you out. And so I may make a future video on it as well. And so right now, all you need to know is that you have collections here and then you have your requests here. You have an overview. Uh, which we can delete. And then I have another request here. So I'm going to click on this plus sign and I'm going to create a new request. So I copied that URL that Zapier gave me. I copied it here. We're going to paste it here as a get request. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending a key value pair, a very, very simple key value pair. We also have authorization, but this is a wide open request for testing. So we do not need it. We have headers as well that we could send. We do not need to do that. So the parameters are going to be, so for instance, we're going to have param one and the value is going to be value one. We can also send another param here. We can click here, param two, and the value is going to be two. Very, very simple. Obviously, this is going to depend on your specific use case. And so one cool thing to note here is that as you are typing these key value parameters, it's appending it to the URL because this is a get request. So we have key two, value two. Okay, now we have our key value pairs and now we are ready to send this request. So we're going to go back to our integration tool, Integromat. We see that it's still listening. And so we are going to issue this request. We're going to click on send. It's going to send that request accepted. Now we're going to go back and successfully determine. So now the Integromat knows the format of the request that it's going to be receiving. And now we can use that data in our other workflow. So we're going to click on OK. We're going to go in here and now we can essentially have this module use the data that we received in the previous modules, not just this module. If you had other modules previously, we can use that data as well in more complex workflows. So as an example, let's say we want to send an email to myself. All I have to do is say, hey there, or hey James. And then in the content, I can say, hey, I received key and value. And then we're going to say key two. And now I am displaying the values. I have, hey, I received key one and key two. And what were the values that we sent? We sent value one and value two. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run this once. And as we run it, we are going to send a request. It's waiting for data. And so this is live right now. And so if you had other modules, other automations, other things going on, it's actually going to work out. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back here and we're going to click send and send this request again. It says accepted. We are going to go back to Integromat and now it's here. And as you can see right now, we have these one here and one here. So if we click on this, you're going to see the operation, the initialization, the output, all we got. So as we, as you can see, we got key one, value one, key two, value two. We're going to close this. We're going to open here and look, we have subject. Hey, James, hey, I receive value one and value two. And, and so now it, it outputted the text that we specified, but it also replaced the tokens. And so this sample automation is working fine. So right now we can add more automations. We can create another automation. We can click on this email and we can send an email. We can copy an email. We can delete an email. This is right now we're sending an email to myself, send an email to myself as we already have it here, but we can send an email to somebody else. We can get emails. There's so many interesting things we can do. And this is only scraping the top of the barrel. This is only the beginning. If you click on plus, 
you have a lot, a lot of apps that you can integrate with. So really depending on what you're doing, depending on your specific use case, there's a lot of things that you can do. And if you wanna create a time-based event, all you have to do is modify this. You can have this run scenario, you can, this scheduling, you can actually set up scheduling for this event. So right now it's immediate, we can run it once every day. So for instance, it can run at 8.30 in the morning. Time zone, you know, specific time zone, we're gonna click okay. And now it's only gonna run there, pick up all these requests that were queued from before and it's gonna go out and process all of them. Right now, obviously, in my opinion, I would probably do it immediately because it's, it's gonna be in real time, but that is the way you do it. Now, another way to do it is if we delete this module, you see, as I delete all these modules, we have a default starting point, which is the time-based module. And so this is scheduler setting. We can run it at regular intervals once every day. We can put every day at specific time. Days of the week, we can run it. We can run it days of the month. We can run it specified days. And with time-based schedules, we can also add any kind of thing. We can send an email. Uh, we can do a lot of interesting things. So for instance, I can put send me an email and we have it set up. What do we have it to set up? We have it, let's say, every day. So every day at 8.30 a.m., it's gonna send me an email. So this could be like a reminder or every day at 8.30 a.m., it can go out to the internet, you know, read some news, check emails, and then send you a report. There's so many things that you can do and it's a great tool. Now, there's a lot of advanced functionality here. You can look at tools, you have flow control, you have repeaters, you have iterators, we have an array aggregator. There's a lot of interesting functionality. You can go to tools, you have variables, basic trigger increment function. You have so many other things that you can do. And this is something I'm gonna be talking in one of the future videos where I'm gonna be covering advanced functionality. And so for this specific tutorial, this is all I wanted to cover. I just wanted to give you a general overview and definitely recommend this tool for your uses. I'm, I'm definitely experimenting with this tool a lot more, playing around and see how I can put it into my use, how I can integrate it with my WordPress sites and some of the other external services that I'm using as well. And so in some of the future videos, I'm gonna be telling you a little bit more about my own use cases, I'm gonna be explaining you my future plans for this tool. I have a lot of interesting things that I plan on doing simply because this is the glue of the internet and a lot of tools these days, they expose API. This concerns Bubble, this concerns Appify, lots of interesting tools I'll expose API. Not only do they expose their own API, but they can also accept API. You can also send them API requests and they can process it and you can build very, very interesting applications without writing a single line of code. And that is actually the purpose of this channel. So if you enjoyed this video, I would really highly appreciate a like, leave a comment with any questions or thoughts about this specific topic or maybe future videos idea. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, definitely subscribe because on this channel, we make videos having to do with no code. And that way you can write applications without writing a single line of code and create amazing applications in record time. And so once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.